Good afternoon, everyone. So today we are going to tour the Alex World Avenue station. So as you know, when we do these station tours, there are a few objectives that we aim to reach. Our goal is to inspect all of the components of the station to make sure that they are in good repair to inspect all of the station assets such as signage, maps, wayfinding, as well as emergency equipment to make sure that they are easily identifiable and in a state of good repair. The final objective is to maintain, is to view the maintenance of the regular, to view the maintenance of your regular cleaning as well as cleanliness of the station. Right now we are standing outside of the south entrance, which is the main entrance to the station. We're going to go inside and take a look at the mezzanine level. As you can see, the majority of these patrons have just gotten off a southbound brown line train. They are exiting the station and going to this office building next door. There's a few things that are very important to note. Wayfinding is correct. This is the Alex World Trade Center. That's where most people exit the train and this is where they end up in. This is the east entrance. All fair gates are in working condition. Signage is incorrect because for those of you who have been keeping up, we no longer have the terminus for the blue train as Powder Springs. It is now Stonehenge. The maps have been updated to reflect the closed Bowling Green Station as well as the new two new stations, Justice Center and Stonehenge. The COVID-19 safety signage in this station is out of date. That's the station agent room. Signage is correct. Lighting, there should be more lighting here. This is not the train control room. This sign is incorrect. There should be more than one. Yes, these are common problems. Again, this is a new station. This station is a rebuilt station. So therefore, it's technically a brand new station. A lot of the problem is that the fare gates were not really considered in our first batch of new stations. Right now we are on our third batch of new stations. Therefore, in those last two batches, fair gates were considered. If you go down this street here, you'll find Techwood Academy. This is supposed to be First Street or... I think it's First Street. Yes, because Alex World Avenue... No, that's First Street up there. This might be Third Street. So this could be Third Street. Why, why am I so confused? Because there's no sign. Yeah, there's a sign. This is also a safety hazard because look. See this? Remember the rules, guys. What if you open up a gate, a door, a hole in the fence such as this, and you see tracks. Anything between those tracks, your wayside. So disregard this fence. Because there's some more tracks there. Anything between these walls, your wayside. This is not secure. This gives wayside access to the public. It's a safety issue. This is actually KRTA property as well. This grassy area. This is going to be... This is not going to be the planned additional parking. This is going to be a part of the station gardens project. 
So as you know, the Station Garden Project is a project to where we're installing gardens at 72 of our rapid transit stations. So far, 38 stations do have station gardens. Alex World Avenue is not one of them. So these hallways, they do say emergency exit, you'll get it from the other side, but they mean a lot more to staff, to uh, employees, to, uh, per to patrons, it's just a raw emergency exit, but it's a lot more than that to just uh, staff. These are restrooms, no signage at all, you have no idea if you're entering the men's room or the women's room. These are newly finished. The pipe chase is unmarked. May not be a big deal to the average person, but in KRTA, a unmarked anything corridor, utility corridor, it's a huge issue. We don't tolerate unmarked utility corridors. Elevator. Here's the fair gates. This is the west side of the station. So people want to know exactly how do people know where it's north, south, east, or west. So the side of the station that you are facing, the direction you're facing when exiting the station is usually going to be how we figure out. See, this is a fair evasion right here. Look at that. Now, many of you, you may be confused because the person's exiting the station. In KRTA, you cannot piggyback in or out. If you know you are exiting at a fair paying station, you have to tap your car. In some instances, the majority of stations have fare machines inside and outside of the station. Because if you're coming from a station that's considered far north or far south, you may not see a fare machine at all. So that means when you need to pay, you need to exit the station, you may need to pay that fare then and there to exit because more often than not, you have it paid going in. So you do have to pay to enter the station and transfer out, or you could pay to exit the station if you do not have a transfer out. But either way, you do have to put that card in when you're entering and exiting the station. If you don't, that's a huge consequence. So we're going downstairs. And we're going to take a look at the... This is an incorrect signage too. The pump room is supposed to be the ancillary. This is not a pump room. This is... Elevator control room, okay, I believe that one. Those rooms are normally a lot smaller. Um, we can't get in it, though. Yeah, we don't have the key to get in that one. Everything looks good platform level. Some signage is still incorrect, but... Apparently, I was just told that the stay safe from the COVID-19 sides, they're digital. So that means they would have to be changed at headquarters. So there's nothing we could do about them in the individual stations. Those, just like the maps, are changed at headquarters. What is a signal room? Is that room because we don't have such a thing, it's just train control. Okay. So here we are in the ancillary. This is just an empty room.
This is the actual um, electrical room. Again, remember how we were at Woodward Station and Cosmo Star Stations, and I said that all the rooms would look the same pretty much? Well, yes, it's true. They will almost always look the same, and then the same rules apply. Don't touch anything in the room. Stand here because sometimes the public will try to slip in behind you. So we've seen the majority of the station. We're going to take a look at this back hallway. We don't see much wrong here. So back here on this hallway is another back hallway. On this hallway you have the ancillary again. Now why does Alex World Avenue have two ancillaries? Mainly because you have the brown train as well as the east-west line. So they need different ancillaries to go ahead and keep the system in sync. The station with the most ancillary is Grand Central Hunter College, having five. One for the north-south, one for the east-west, one for the brown, one for the regional rail north-south, and one for the regional rail east-west. Get a look at that train control room. When we look at these train control rooms, you're probably wondering why do we come in the get go in these every single time. The main reason why we always go into the train control room, and here's the main reason: to make sure it's clean, to make sure there are no fire hazards. To make sure it's safe. This is a secured room. This is the largest secured room the KRTA has. But yes, this is a secured room. This is an emergency hallway. If there's a fire, patrons will um, use these hallways to exit the station. You see right through here, you may not be able to see because they put these curtains up, which shouldn't be here, but through these doors is the mezzanine. It takes you out onto the platform. It's a miniature storage room. This emergency exit, if there's a fire, you'll most likely be guided out this door out into the street and right here is the Alex World Avenue um, streetcar stop named Alex World Avenue and Hospital Drive it's off peak right now so not much traffic comes up out here but during peak, every tra all the traffic is in the station. Looking at the station gardens. This is not really the station garden project. These trees are just planted here as decoration. There is no access really to that parking lot over there. That's why this bridge, it used to be a part of the old Alex World Avenue station. However, ever since it was closed, 
Excuse me, sorry, sleepy. Ever since the station was closed, they just put up that fence. Now you cannot get in there. And these are no longer, buses no longer go here. They go out down there now. And this, so you used to have some platforms and that was it. That was your old Alex World Avenue station. So now that we've taken a good tour, of the Alex World Avenue station, we found that pretty much it's a pretty nice station. Could use its work on crowd control because it's a huge problem. As you know, Alex World Avenue is the most crowded station in the network. And that is because of the sheer volume of people that use it. However, it was never planned to be a high capacity station. See the definition of a high capacity station, we're not going in there. The definition of a high capacity station is a station that could manage 1,000 people transferring from one train to another in both directions, a thousand people each, for each line at once. So it's more, it's very flexible term, but a high capacity station has to carry its weight. Our trains carry a thousand people per train. This train station has four platforms. That means 4,000 people are supposed to move through the station at the same time. If all the trains pull up, you have 1,000 people on each train, it is a given fact that the vast majority of the people are going to exit the eastbound train and get onto a different train. Most people will stay on the westbound train. Everyone's pretty much going to get off the ob. Uh, the north, the southbound brown train, and then you'll have some people that gets off the northbound brown train, but all of them are going to switch to the east or the, the eastbound. Some of them will do west. So this is a very busy station because a lot, most of your activity at this station is switching trains. If you are coming from all the way up north. And you go to Alex World Avenue. Now you're at Alex World Avenue. You would most likely want to go west to Richmond. Or west under four. Back up north. How that doesn't make sense. Or even to Thomasville. You're going to want to go. If you want to go to. If you want to go to Stonehenge. There's so many things. Yeah, you have multiple options, but this is the most convenient because the platform's downstairs. Everywhere else is a long walk. Grand Central on the college is overcrowded, but it handles its overcrowding. Ever since the new renovations, that station pulls its weight. This station, it can pull its weight, but because most of the time transfer is always in the virtue of peak direction, there's the reason why it's so extremely crowded in the mornings on one way, extremely crowded in the evenings on the other direction. The only station that gets close to being this crowded is Grand Central Hunter College. Grand Central Hunter College moves its passengers well. Cosmos Church is so, um, it's also a crowded station, but not many people transfer there because that is your final transfer point. Many people have had already two other final transfer points before they get to Cosmos Church. This was done by design. So even though you could transfer at Lindenburg and then Cosmos Church. We always have it set up to look like your final transfer points are Woodward, Lindenburg, and Dorsey. Why do we do this? To prevent everyone from trying to transfer at Cosmos Church. 
which is an inconvenient transfer if you're going from a number service trade to a color service trade. Even though the new tower at Cosmos Church carries its weight, and uh, then if you look at Bergam Airport, many people, it's a high capacity station because it can carry its weight. Only two trains can be present at one time. Another high capacity transit station is Linden, Linden Hall because Linden Hall can transfer pretty much 6,000 at the exact same time despite the fact that only four trains will ever be present in the station at once. Do not jump on my fare machine, please. So, with that being said, it's, um, that's about it for your station tour. We will go and take a tour of Thomasville Station next, which is so close. As a matter of fact, that is it up there. That tour is so short, that, so we're just going to walk to Thomasville Station and take a tour. Now, if we had left the same time of a train, the train would have been there. This is a old streetcar route. That is also another Walmart Super Center. This is a very busy Walmart, but right up here is always quiet because there isn't a lot of activity going on. It's a different feel at Thomasville. Thomasville is usually very empty. This station is mainly only used for people trying to get from the blue to the three. It is actually in the top 25 least used stations in the system, which says a lot. It's the least used. And the reason why, people typically only get off one train, get on another. You, the school train has a lot of activity here due to the Ashton Park or high school over there. But most of the activity happens at Ashton Park. So Thomasville, not really an assuming station. The platform extension project had just happened as well. Elevators were also added. The mezzanine was also enlarging. Some rooms were put in. And then the... Um, Customer service booths were supposed to be here. Some extra stairwells were put in as well. And the restrooms are supposed to be getting constructed behind this wall. This is a very tight station. The land area is very small. It also sits on an embankment. Remember, anything, if there's a fence... Anything between these two fences is wayside. That's your parking lot. Thomasville was a neighborhood station. These tracks, after for so many years, we finally have tracks going towards downtown from here. This has been in the proposal since the 80s. And there are finally tracks going up and around. That's Ashton, Jonathan Hills Elementary, Ashton Park High School, some homes. Here's another view of the Walmart. One thing that is strikingly sim similar, there is no signage here indicating that you're entering the station. Neither is there fare control, which here is wide enough for some level of fair control, if not in the actual mezzanine itself. If we look at the back parking lot, it's small. There aren't that many spaces. This is a type of stacked parking. So technically, you're not even supposed to drive down here. You're supposed to drive through and through. 
but there are no arrows to indicate that either. Anytime you see the aisle that narrow, it's normally stacked parking. ANC building. The abbreviation is ANC, but really the real name of it is the ancillary. So this is your same electrical room. Clean. No problems. Train control room, clean, no issues. This parking deck is not KRTA's parking deck. It belongs to the tower. But we will still do a small courtesy check up here too. Because here's the weirdest reason why. Trash actually does blow from down here on our property up there. And that's because of the topography. So wind typically blows this way. Thomasville, I don't think I have to say this, is a part of our station garden project. Now, sometimes the gardens, don't get me wrong when I say that your station gardens are always on the platform and everything. No, that's not true. Station gardens can be anywhere near the station. So this could be at station entrances, in bus loops, on platforms, or even wayside. Sometimes your guard station garden is wayside. Harder to maintain because of the wayside clearance needed. However, sometimes we have low maintenance plants wayside. So I told you Thomasville station was gonna be pretty quick. Well, as far as that is concerned, um, as far as it's concerned, we have, um, yeah, we've done two station tours. I don't think we should do any more for the rest of the day. We should call it a day. I'm going to go ahead and go over here to Walmart. Have a wonderful day.